Hello everyone and welcome to Season 1, Episode 17 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host, Travis McNeil, and once again today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 Matches of 2020 with match number 34 on our list, which sees us once again return to the 2020 uh, New Japan G1 Climax with a Block B tournament bout between the IWGP Heavyweight Champion Tatsuya Naito and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Um, this was from the second night of the G1, and it was held on September 20th, which coincidentally happens to be my, my birthday. So um, this match felt really special. Um, so with the pandemic, um, you know, the G1 being moved originally supposed to be because of the, the you know, Tokyo Olympics, um, and then moving to the fall, um, the limitations on fans. I've mentioned before that, that coming into the G1, I think it was a little apprehensive that it would be quite what it normally would be, um, which is, is normally the thing I look to most uh, out of the year on the pro wrestling calendar. Um, this uh, was the second night. Uh, the first night uh, happened the night before on September 19th, and it was good, but did feel a little bit different. Um, the, the main event of that show was uh, Kota Ibushi and uh, Kazuchika Okada um, in a rematch of their incredible match from the Tokyo Dome that I think everybody was really looking forward to. Um, and it just, it really didn't hit that mark. It felt a, a little bit hollow and, and I think the, the crowd had quite a bit to do with that. Um, so going into night two, uh, Block B, uh, for the most part, generally uh, doesn't quite uh, have the, you know, hit the mark that uh, a lot of Block A matches do. Um, so, you know, uh, Tanahashi and Naito, I think they had a lot of pressure on them to deliver. Um, and, and thankfully they did. And this felt like a classic G1 main event. It felt like what I needed as a fan, and I thought what a, a lot of fans needed at that point in time. Um, they played to the hits. Um, it didn't overstay its welcome at all, and that's one thing that I really enjoy about the G1. Everything is a 30-minute time limit with the exception of the finals. Uh, so, you know, sometimes New Japan matches, uh, they can go a little overly long, uh, especially when they are, you know, those main event title matches. Uh, so this kind of keeps everything in a, in a nice tight package. Uh, they went almost to the time limit, which became a, a recurring theme through a, a lot of the matches in the tournament. Um, so it, it created the drama there of, of when they go to the time limit. The story here I thought was really cool. Tanahashi... He's been doing it a long time, um, and, and the commentators made, made it a point that he will most likely not win the G1 this year. Um, he, he just doesn't have the longevity that he used to that's required to win, you know, the five to six block matches that are required to make it into that finals. Um, so they smartly crafted a story here of with Naito being the IWGP heavyweight champion, if Tanahashi was able to defeat him, he would earn himself a future title shot, which he could then win and get himself into the Wrestle Kingdom main event without having to win the G1. So he created this really cool story where if Tanahashi wins this one match, he could make his way back there, which I thought was really cool. Um, they played to the hits. Uh, Tanahashi went after the knee of Naito, uh, trying to set up his Texas Cloverleaf, which he has defeated Naito with before in the past. Uh, so there was a lot of really good work over the leg that Naito did a, a pretty good job selling. Uh, lots of dragon screws and, and teases of that Texas Cloverleaf. Um, the counters in this match were superb. Uh, both of these guys are, you know, obviously incredibly familiar with each other. Uh, there was a really good spot where uh, Naito went for his signature, you know, flying forearm. Tanahashi caught him in a German suplex, which is a, a match, or, uh, you know, a sequence that they've done before. But then Naito broke out of that and Tanahashi ended up going for like a straight jacket sort of, uh, you know, shut down German suplex instead, which was, again, just really cool. Um, they built into a really good finish um, with, again, just counters and, and both guys going for their signature stuff. Um, Tanahashi, you know, was, was kind of on the ropes. Uh, they were trading forearms and he was starting to collapse. And he went for one last defiant slap, which we've seen him use many times over the years, you know, primarily against uh, Okada at the Tokyo Dome. Uh, so he went for the big splat, uh, slap. Naito blocked it. I then just put him away, dropped him on his head, and then hit a Destino for the finish. 
Um, again, this match, uh, it, it really held up as just a classic New Japan G1 main event, like I said, um, just where it was in time, you know, like I said, gets it, you know, those extra brownie points uh, for what the, the match meant in the grand scheme of things. And again, it happening on my birthday, it uh, very well could be the best match to ever happen on a September 20th. Um, you know, I, I'd really have to do my research to find out, but I, I think it probably hits that mark. Uh, like everything with New Japan, it can be found on New Japan World. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube to Pro Wrestling's Top 50. Like and comment on the video and let me know what you thought. Follow on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And we'll see you all again tomorrow as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.